will be. Jimmy will be up here with the arm lock putter. That is true. Yeah, yeah. these putters are too long, yeah. like my putter. It'll be sticking out like this. <laughs> I'll be up here when I when I win. I am joined today by Jim Knaus. Jim, we are talking lag putting. This is something we get questions about all the time is, you know, how can I improve lag putting or, or how do I approach a long putt? And here today we're faced with a 30 footer because one of our four stats of track is three putts inside 30 feet. So those 20, 30 foot lag putts are so important for a lot of our students. So walk us through how you would approach like a 30 foot putt if you're out playing. Yeah, it is a very important part of it is, is getting the right speed on a putt, especially 30 feet somewhere in this distance because you're most likely not going to make it. But if you can get it within top in range, that's where you want to be. So, so my process when I'm looking at a 30 footer like this, first of all, I want to determine if it's uphill or downhill. A lot of times I'll walk to the side and look at the putt, see if it's uphill or downhill. That's kind of the best way I find to, to see if it's uphill or downhill. And then if you're if you're behind the hole and you see the last five feet, what is it gonna do in the last five feet? Breaking right, breaking left. And then you come back around to the front and you, and you figure out, or what I do is I wanna figure out what pace I want this ball to go in the hole. Every time I putt, I wanna make the putt. Mm -hmm. But how do you wanna make the putt? Do I wanna hit it two feet by, three feet by, or do I wanna die it in the front of the hole? For a putt like this, slightly downhill, all I'm really looking to do is die it in the hole. Um, so if I, if I know that I'm going to die it in the hole and then I track backwards the line that I want to hit it on um, from where I want it to enter the hole, you know, you, you hear a lot about the clock system. Do I want it to enter in if 12 o'clock is the top of the hole? I want to enter probably about 7 o'clock on this putt right here. I think it might break slightly to the right. So then I track back to the, to the putt and, um, and then I'm going to take one, two practice swings um, to visualize exactly what length stroke I want to, to see how it's going to go in. You know, I just took four or five, but on the golf course, I'm going to take <laughs> one practice swing and then address the ball, look one more time at the hole, and hit the putt. Let's see if we can do it. So that's about right on a downhill putt. I'm okay with it going two or three feet by the hole because the one coming back is going to be slightly uphill. Yeah. No, and, and there are some big keys in that. I think that so many of our students don't visualize. One, you're visualizing the pace of the putt going in the hole. You're not just picturing the line, but you're literally putting a speed to the line. And that's so important for you at home is often when I'm working with my students, they don't have a clue how fast they want that ball to be moving when it enters the cup, so that's a huge piece. The second thing I saw you do there is when you were doing your practice strokes, you weren't staring at the ball. You were, right. you were looking and you're using that hand-eye coordination to see the pace to the cup. So often I see our students staring down at the ground, losing sight of the target. So the fact that you were looking while you were trying to feel the pace, and then you say, I look back, and then I take one last look, I think that's powerful because it's putting that visual of a target and just letting you to naturally react with that hand-eye coordination versus being so ball-bound that I see so many of our students. So that's, those are two keys, I think, for you at home to take away from this. Now, another big piece I would say is how do you get better at controlling your speed? So is there a routine you do or a drill you do when you're out on tour and you're warming up for the week to get a feel for that pace that maybe our students and viewers at home could practice on their home course or practice if they go to a course that maybe takes five or ten minutes for them to really get a better feel for pace. Yeah, Brad, I have a great practice drill for when I get to the course or pre-tournament week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That'll take you 10, 15 minutes. So find one putt uphill, take a putt from 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet, 40 feet, 50 feet, five putts, and put a tee, one tee, one foot behind the hole, and another tee two feet behind the hole. So that's my target zone that I wanna, that I wanna hit the, the putt, the pace to be one to two feet by the hole. So you do it from 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet, 40 feet, 50 feet. One, one ball from each of those and attempt to get all five in that zone. It's very hard, but if you can do it, then you move on to the downhill putt. 
find a downhill putt, do the same thing, 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet, 40 feet, 50 feet. Try to get it in that one to two feet by the whole zone. And if you do that, your speed on the course is gonna be fantastic. And it only take you 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, that's perfect. And that's so crucial, because getting a feel for pace before you go play is, is such a huge piece of this, because again, controlling our three putts inside 30 feet is so important to lowering your score. So if you can really get command from that 40, 30, 20 range and warm up five, 10 minutes, that's gonna help you tremendously. So if you're struggling with your putting, you wanna work on your pace, you wanna see just what's going on, what you wanna do is head to golftech.com and find a coach near you.